your prayers on the subject, the silent night of the desert. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. And today we hear the great Advent voice of John the Baptist. You all know John the Baptist. He is the cousin of Jesus, the Christ. He was born before Jesus, but knew Jesus in his childhood. Mother Mary, in her visitation, visited Elizabeth when she was pregnant with the child who was to become the precursor of the Messiah. And so now we have skipped from Christmas time to a much later date. In that time in history, it is about the time for the Messiah to show himself, to see the whole world. In today's gospel church, however, we, we see John the Baptist. John the Baptist is one of the most interesting figures of salvation history. It is natural for us to visualize him as an eccentric yet charismatic person with his camel skin clothing, long hair and beard. He would have had to have a powerful message to stir the hearts of those who gathered to listen to him preach. We cannot see him or feel the power in his voice, but we have heard his words as they are recorded in the scriptures. In fact, we have heard many of the stories from the scriptures so often, it is easy for us not to pay attention to how they are speaking to us today in this 21st century. This means we are missing out on God's revelation of himself. And we are missing out on how to apply his words to our lives. We just do not understand that the words of scripture are a clear way to measure our faithfulness to live as God intended us to live. So today, on this second Sunday of Advent, the church gives us John the Baptist as the central figure to teach us something about our own relationship with God. There is one verse in today's gospel that should cause us to examine our own response to God's plan for our life. Luke tells us that the word of God came to John in the desert. John was the name of the voice sent to shout in the world that had been, been described by many prophets before John as a wilderness, a jungle. He was that voice for God. Did you ever wonder, church, what John was doing in the desert in the first place? Before he uttered a word about Jesus as the promised Messiah, John was in the desert to listen to God. Only after God revealed how his plan of salvation was to be fulfilled in Jesus, did John begin to proclaim that salvation was at hand. How does John listen and responding to God speaking to him apply to you and to me? The key to respond to what God desires for us is found and now we're taking the time to listening to God speak to us, just as he did to John. You and I are part of God's plan to make the gift of God, Jesus, known to the world. Yes, we are called. You and I are called to be prophets in the same manner John the Baptist was called. Frightening, isn't it? We're called to be prophets. We're called to be messengers for God. 
I know. But now you are internally dismissing your call to be a prophet, to be a witness, to be a missionary, to be that prophetic voice that's solely unrealistic. The truth is that we are all too easily dismissed. We are too easily to dismiss our part in proclaiming Jesus to others. That is precisely the reason why we, like John, should be listening to God speaking to us. We are so busy listening to everyone and everything else that we have failed to live our baptism, anointing of being priest, prophet, and king. During our baptism, you and I were anointed by the Spirit as prophets, called to live as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Our baptism, our baptism, the anointing, equipped us to proclaim the love of God and share the story of salvation with others. That is the call of a prophet. And prophets must only speak what they hear God telling them. So the gospel we hear today questions how well we are living our prophetic lives, our prophetic call. God clearly speaks to us during our daily prayer. If we take the time to listen to him, we got to listen to God. Listen to what the Spirit is telling us. But this means we must have a personal and private life for prayer. Our prayer life should be modeled after that of John and Jesus who always found a quiet place and listen to God speaking to their hearts. Jesus made it clear that he only did what the Father told him. He said, all the things I have made known to you, I have heard from my Father. In John chapter 15, verse 15, Jesus was also clear that we are to be his witnesses. We are his witnesses. That is why listening to God speak to our hearts is fundamental in doing his will instead of doing our own thing. And too many times we let our ego get in the way. If we are listening to God, then we are listening to the world, our own flesh, or the devil. If we are not listening to God, then we are listening to the world or listening to our own flesh or that of the evil one. Church, none of those things will lead us to the glorify God or allow us to be effective prophets. Part of our prayer life should have us reading and listening to God in the scriptures. It is there that we will find all we need for everlasting life. It is the pages of the scriptures that we will discover the depth of God's love and the meaning of salvation. The Holy Spirit will make our hearts burn within us as the scriptures are open for us. It says in Luke chapter 24, verse 32, then that happens, we will embrace the reality of Jesus and find our voice as John's found his. The more we listen to God speaking to us in the scriptures, in his holy word, the more we're going to be effective prophets, preparing hearts to hunger, who hunger for Christ. John was in the desert listening to God listening to the call of God. Where do we find ourselves each day? Are we 
in front of our cable TV? Are we off doing busy work for the Lord? Are we entertaining ourselves with games or other activities? We do so many things which in themselves are not bad or sinful things. There are other things we can do that can be considered as good things for others or ourselves. But if we have not taken the time to listen to God, the good things we do will never help us in leading those we serve to embrace Christ Jesus. That's why Jesus said, many say they did not, that they did all this in my name. But I would say, out of my sight, I never knew you. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 through 23. Sisters and brothers, if we do not listen to discern God's will before we can do anything, we are doing our will and not God's. How can we proclaim the good news to others if our own measure of following Christ is by our good works or how well we follow the rules. Advent is a gift of the church to challenge us to reflect, to revive, to renew our faith and our hope in God. It challenges us, Advent does, to be still, to be quiet, and to be at peace. To reflect on how satisfied we are with all the good we do, all the inspirational programs we attend, or how we serve others. Advent is a time to reflect on how well we are preparing the way of the Lord. How can we prepare the way if we are not listening to God before we go out to do God's will? Help me someone. John the Baptist grew up rather early in his life. He decided and declared himself for a monastic tradition, a tradition of holiness, fasting, asceticism, that was quite common at that time because there was a feeling in those days, at that time in history, that something great was coming and would come very soon to change the world. And so John went out into the desert around the Jordan River, and he mingled with some of the communities. The communities were charismatic communities. They were longing and hoping for the coming of the Messiah, the King of all kings. And he was to come very quickly. And they were expecting him in their own lifetime. And so it was that John the Baptist came out of the desert. Why the desert? The desert is the place where you form prophets, where you form holy men and women of God, single-minded people, totally committed to God. Wow. And why they were in this vast wilderness of sand and no life? Because the desert. It's a vast wilderness, and only the strongest spirit can even survive in that type of environment. And there's no distractions. There's just an emptiness. There's a desert. There's silence. There's night and day. And the person goes out into the desert. And they are naked before the whole universe. There's nothing there. There's a void. There's nothing. The food is rooted around in very strong trees. They dig their roots deep in the desert sand. And it is a very aesthetic sort of life. There's nothing but you and God's creation of the silent of the night and the day. And there, John the Baptist honed in his spiritual skills 
with discipline and knowledge. There in this vast wasteland of desert, he hears the word of God, O oh, bless his holy name, calling him to become the one who's going to announce the coming of the Messiah. The Jewish people have been praying for over 2,000 years, and it is their great hope that God will send the one promised by Moses, the one spoken by all the prophets, the Holy One of God, the Blessed One of God, the star child of God, the one that was to make Israel free and create a whole new world, a new order. And so John came out dressed as Elijah, the prophet, had dressed many years before him, dressed in ham camel's hair, assisting on locusts and honey. He came with a strong and simple message. Get ready for the coming of the Lord. It's almost like I can hear his voice saying, you better get up. You better wake up. You better open your hearts to receive this God. This is the way he preaches. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his path. Every valley shall be filled. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight. The rough ways made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The short form of this is, hear my voice, my people. It's time to turn your lives around. He came preaching a hard message of judgment and forgiveness. He came preaching the gospel of repentance. The word is metanoia. It means more than just repentance. That Greek word means turn around. Turn and fall on your knees and be sorry for your sins. It means a change of your whole life because the Messiah is about to appear. It means a change, a, a conversion, a reconnection with God. And all the business about evening out the roads and straightening them. He is saying this is what we must do. It is our roads that are crooked. It is our places where we have created deep holes to hide in. We must attend to making that road clear and straight and direct from God's heart into our own hearts. And of course, that's what we are supposed to do doing Advent. It's a little cleaning house, a little, you know, broom sweeping, you know, sweeping out, you know, all of that dirt, all of that uh, waste, all, all, all of that, just sweeping it out of our insides and, you know, cleaning, you know, it's a little house cleaning for us, spiritual house cleaning. It's time we reshuffle our lives to look at what is important and what is not important. To look at what is perhaps more of a distraction and more of a light. To turn once again to becoming the kind of people that Jesus Christ has taught us to become. That God has desired us to become. People who are self-sacrificing, self-determined. And love, love, sacrifice, and determination when it comes to God, to Almighty God. So that we can reach out to our sisters and brothers. Those who really need that help and support. This is the message of Advent. When John the Baptist is finished his preaching, what John will tell us, which is true, that if you prepare your hearts, if you straighten the pathways and make it an easy road and ride for God to embrace your heart, then you will have found the Messiah within you. Christ is found within you. 
The Spirit of God is inside of you. It's that old acronym, I know me, I love me, I forgive me, I accept me, because God lives within me. The other thing that this preparation for Christmas, this Advent calls upon us to do is to remember that Christmas is a gift that is primarily the gift of God. It is the gift of God of his only begotten son, a gift given to us. And in our turn, we are to give this gift, the gift that God has given to us, to each other and to all the people in our area of life and prayer and care. Therefore, my people, Advent, Christmas is a time for gift giving. And we imitate God and the Christ child in peace and in love. I often wonder how anyone could be attracted to John the Baptist. Help me, Holy Ghost. After all, he had to be a frightening figure in his camel hair clothes, uncut hair and beard, his strange diet habits. But beyond that, who is attracted to someone whose message is, you are a sinner. You're, you're going to hell if you don't change your way. What happened to the old sales technique of not offending the one you are trying to sell something to? John certainly did not miss his words or compromise his calling. He said, you brood of vipers, produce good fruit as a sign of your repentance. And, you know, this is a very beautiful thing that we must realize that, you know, we're called to equip and inspire people to be like Christ. That's why I became a divine word missionary, that we equip and inspire others to center their lives on Christ, making them true disciples and you know, we, we got to be faithful to that. You know, and we are called to that. We share God's love and our lives are changed because of that love. And so we commit ourselves to a life of following Christ Jesus as the disciples of this God. John the Baptist, we know, was chosen for his role in salvation history. The son of Zechariah and Elizabeth, John was filled with the Holy Spirit at conception. He was gifted with the ability to speak powerfully and draw all from Jerusalem and the region around Judea to hear his words and respond by repenting. Today, the church needs more John the Baptist because the sad fact is less and less people feel the need to be in an organized religion. In fact, young people, less than 10% of our young people even go to church. So the only way to reverse that is to not to depend on the church to reach out to them. But we must recognize the mission given to each one of us is to make the gospel message known to the world, to adults, to young people, adults, to young people, to children, to everyone. The scripture tells us we're called to be disciples, not to be faithful church members. It is easy to be a faithful church member because all that is required of us is to be faithful in attending, faithful in giving, faithful in time, faithful, you know, uh, and, 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 and being Men and women are sharing our faith. But we have embraced, or have we embraced, our mission to spread the good news of Christ crucified to everyone we meet on, on, on the byways and highways of America. The plan of God is that each one of us have been given a gift for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God on Mother Earth. The kingdom of God, church, is at hand. 
It is at hand. John the Baptist understood the Old Testament scriptures and how the prophets were paving the way just as he was for the one who was to come. We have been gifted to pave the way to proclaim the good news of the one who came to bring us salvation and life. I know it scares you a little bit to be a prophet, to be a missionary, to be a disciple. It scares us all, but we are called to do it. If not you, who will do it? Why should I do that for Christ when I've been taught all my life that my, my faith is personal and private? That's what the Roman Catholic Church tells me to do. In one sense, that is absolutely true. Because without my private time with God, my faith is all works without the dependence on God. On the other hand, the church tells us we are, through our baptism, we have been empowered to evangelize. Unfortunately, it seems we have been empowered to turn inward instead of outward. What was it that John the Baptist touched in those who responded to his message about the one who was to come and baptize them in spirit and in fire? I happen to believe it was that sense there is more to our relationship with God than we have experienced. We do instinctively know there is something missing, but we do not know if it exists or if we are worthy of it when it comes. Yet, church, we want it. But when offered to us, I think we hesitate because it is a journey into the unknown. And what is in the unknown is frightening to many of us. What we have worked so hard at attaining in our faith journey is predictability. Christ invited us to follow him like Thomas, we say, but we do not know where you're going, Lord. I do not know if you ever thought of this, but when Jesus responded to Thomas' statement, Jesus did not tell Thomas where he was going. No, instead Jesus said, where I am going, you know the way. Because I'm the way, the truth, and the life. We know that it is true. So why are we not doing all we can do to discover Christ? Today, Advent is calling you to renew, to revive to restore, to rediscover your faith, the truth about God and how God is in our world. How did you spend your first week of Advent? Have you responded to God's call? Are you prepared to respond to Christ when he calls you to open your hearts to him this Christmas? Do you understand your faith is not private? It is to be shared with those who need to hear the unvarnished words. Unless you bear good fruit, you are not doing God's will. You got to share it, church. You got to pass it on, church. You got to be a witness. You got to tell the story. You know, unlike John, we're not called to browbeat anyone. We're not called to judge. We're not called to condemn. Nor do we shun the sinner. But we are trained to minister. We're called to be friends. And to befriend the sinner before we evangelize them. Our strongest tool to evangelize is not how faithful we are as members of our faith community. It is how visible is our belief in God's promises to forgive and forget our sins and weaknesses. 
How visible is our belief that because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we have been freed from the guilt and shame of our sins and stand before Almighty God as sons and daughters sharing life in the kingdom of God. Are we living a life that gives those who doubt hope or reinforce their belief that God does not care? He's so far away from us. John the Baptist never doubted, did he? Well, there was the one time when he sent his disciples to Jesus and asked, Are you the one who was to come? Jesus answered by saying, Tell John what you see. There is the key to effective evangelization right there. We must live in a way that we see and feel the power of Almighty God. This is what I think I would like to share with you because it points something out to me that is very vital for Christmas. Christmas is for givers, not receivers. It is to give, to give your time your treasure. It, 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 it's to give yourself, your total self, to give whatever you can because God is a giver and Jesus was a giver, giving his whole life for us. So, you know, I, I really think ever since, you know, my parents left this earth, I believe and I have faith they're up in heaven looking down on their children, delighted that this Advent season, this Christmas, I think they will appear some Christmas with all the gifts and wonders for their children of a child's Christmas. Because for my sister and my brothers, my parents gave us the gift of understanding Christmas to be a time of giving and being peaceful to all you meet. Christmas, it is the understanding of Christmas that God is a giver, that Jesus is a giver, and that the Holy Spirit is the peace giver. When we learn to give to each other, and what do we give? We give ourselves. We give our hearts and minds and souls. We give our time and treasure and everything that we can afford. And we call that gift love. Love is what we give. That is the heart of Christmas. That is the heart of Advent. That God teaches us how to love through his son, the child Jesus. His son teaches us how to love through each other. And most of all, we teach each other how to love as Jesus loves. How to love as God loves. And how to love as the Holy Spirit loves. And this is the changing of the world. This is the conversion of the world. This is the metanoia of the world. This is the hope, the peace, the joy, the future as we listen to the silent night, the holy night, the peaceful night of the desert. Holy night.